of God. Hey guys, King of Persia back, and this is my history of MMOs. This is the second video in my in my series of videos about MMOs. I did a little bit of research on the history of MMOs, and this is it. This is what I found. So, the term MMORPG was coined by Richard Garriott, who is the developer of Ultima Online, which was released in 1997. I'm going to be looking at my computer screen because I have it all typed down. Typed out. Um, MMORPGs can be traced back to MUD games, multi-user dungeons. Um, some examples of these are Zork, which was popular on the ARPANET, which is one of the predecessors to the what is commonly known as the internet today. ARPANET was a series of uh, interconnected computers that was developed by the military. Um, uh, just get, another game just called MUD. Uh, 1978 is when it was released, it was the first MUD game. And it was it's the oldest virtual world ever. You can still play it. You can you can I think you have to download something, but you can still play it. You just gotta go to their website and download it or whatever, and you can play it. It's it's that simple. Obviously it's free. Then there's another mud game called Genocide, released in nineteen ninety two, which was the first PvP mud. Um, Overall, MUDs started in the 1970s. They used a lot of role-playing features, which is which is what really started the whole role-playing feature in video games today. Um, they were text-based. Uh, whenever you, whenever something would happen in the game, they would the the game would uh, tell you what's going on. Like uh, like you're walking through a dungeon. You you look around. You see the torches lighting your way. You're walking through the dungeon. You pick up an object. It glows in your hand. What do you do with it? and then you would type in what you would do with it. Now, I don't really know if you had to follow any type of coding or any type of syntax to tell the game what to do, but I really don't know. I've never played a mud game before. Um, there's lots of different ones, lots of different mud games. There's our um, role-playing ones, PvP ones, um, even educational ones, educational mud games. Um, they actually used online chat as well. Uh, they eventually evolved into graphical MUDs with the advancement of technology, you know, like uh, sprites and uh, um, 2D, 2D graphics. And most modern MMORPGs can be traced back to MUD games because MUD games use the basic features that are found that are found in modern day MMORPGs. You know, PVE, PVP, role playing elements, online chat, all that stuff, online capabilities. The first graphical multi-user RPG was Neverwinter Nights, which was released in 1997, I'm sorry, 1991, which went to 1997. One of the things that really made it popular was that it actually had guilds in the game that people could join and they would create uh, game events and whatnot. Um, other multi-user RPGs of the 90s are uh, The Shadow of East Serbius and The Ruins of Kaldar. Uh, the first 3D multi-user game was Meridian 59. That was released in 1995. It's seen as the first massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Um, and it had 25,000 people join the beta. That one you can still play as well. Obviously it's not up to the standards of today's MMOs, but still probably a, you know, a nostalgia fest. Ultima Online released in 1987. Currently has 0.6% of the market. You know, that's not that's not too great today, but it was still a great game back then, from what I heard. I, I never played it. Uh, it was the first MMO to get 100,000 subscribers. Started uh, to really get the genre off its knees until, like, it, it really made the genre popular when it came out, until EverQuest came out. EverQuest started development in 1996 and was released in 1999. That stayed popular for about five years. Uh, Ashran's Call was another one that came out in 1999. Um, in terms of MMORPGs, these three, EverQuest, Ultima Online, and Ashran's Call, became known as the Big Three of the 1990s. Um, Final Fantasy XI was the first console-based MMORPG for PS2. This really showed that MMOs were taking, were really making their way into the market because they're starting to become console-based. 
Uh, let's see. That was released in 2002, and it really proved worthwhile because it's, I think from what I read, it's the most successful Final Fantasy game of the series. Uh, Second Life was released in 2003. That focused, that's not entirely MMORPG based, it's MMO um, social. It's a very social based game. Um, people made millions of dollars off of that game by um, making services for the game that they could offer. Uh, the uh, That game really really took off. I mean, even my, my 53 year old dad started playing it. It must have been good. And now for the current generation of MMORPGs. EverQuest 2 was obviously the sequel to EverQuest and it still has it still had, that was released in 2004. Um, um, and it still, it was still a success by Sony standards, but it was dwarfed by World of Warcraft. Um, this, overall, the, with the current generation of MMORPGs, the standard for gameplay and graphics and stuff that's seen in today's MMOs was set by EverQuest 2 and World of Warcraft, both of which were released in 2004. Now, Word of Warcraft. Well, that's a lot better than we usually do. Uh, All right, thumbs up. Ready, guys. Let's or... do this. Leroy Dragons. Oh my God, he just ran in. Uh, this takes place in the Warcraft universe, which was made by Blizzard with Warcraft One, Two, and Three, and then their expansion packs. Uh, currently, it's the most played MMORPG as of the filming of this video, and still going strong. Up to uh, Wrath of the Lich King, there's World of Warcraft, the original game, then the Burning Crusade, then Wrath of the Lich King. Yeah. And Cataclysm, my bad. And up to Cataclysm. Cataclysm came after the Wrath of the Lich King. Uh, those four, one, two, three, four, are in the top 20 best-selling PC games of all time. Uh, the only, It's also the only... Um, I'm sorry. The only MMORPG to ever come close to the subscriber base that World of Warcraft has, which is like 9 or 10 million right now, uh, is RuneScape, which is a free browser-based MMORPG, but that only has 1 million. That still has a long way to go to catch up to World of Warcraft. Uh, and many think, and are most likely right, that World of Warcraft set the standard for what MMORPGs are today. Personally, uh, there's another MMORPG called Star Wars Galaxies that came out. That did really well at first, but it started to decline after a major update. Um, I played a little bit of it. I, uh, from, what I, from what I got from it, and my theory is that the reason it failed, because it was eventually shut down, is that uh, it didn't really... Uh, it came out before World of Warcraft, before the standard was set by World of Warcraft, and it didn't didn't do what it did too well after a while. That's my theory as to why it was shut down. Please correct me if you've played it though, because I haven't played it, so that's not entirely a valid theory. Uh, recently, free to play has become a popular model based a popular model for MMORPGs. I will go into more detail about free-to-play in future videos. Um, some of these games are Guild Wars 1, Guild Wars 2, which is the reason Guild Wars has been such a successful series is because it's free-to-play. Uh, with Guild Wars, you just have to buy the initial game, and that's it. It's completely free after that. I don't think there's any microtransaction markets or anything. Uh, EverQuest 2 became free, Lord of the Rings Online became free, and um, these are games that were previously you had to pay for them. Um, this helps start the microtransaction market model for MMORPGs. This is where you buy the game or you just download it for free. However you get it, it's either free or you pay for it. And then once you play it, you can buy things, buy items or buffs for the game to help you out through the game. So you could buy weapons. You use real world money for this, um, real life currency to buy in-game currency to get stuff. Or you could use real, yeah, real world money to buy stuff in the market. And then you buy, you buy items like, uh, there's a game called Loads Online, which is a free-to-play MMO, but it's got a micro-transaction-based micro market. Now, 
One thing in that game that a lot of people didn't like, I didn't like it too much either, was that you pretty much had to buy this one item called incense in the market, because if you didn't, you were totally underpowered. You, uh, which means that you were very weak. That's what underpowered meant. Now, uh, the item you'd get would increase your damage done and your healing done, your healing done, literally by 200%. You needed that to get by in the game. A lot of people didn't like that. Um, uh, but that's that's an example of something you buy in a microtransaction-based market. One of the latest MMORPGs is Star Wars: The Old Republic. You'll find me mentioning World of Warcraft and Star Wars: The Old Republic the most because those are the only two I've really gotten into. I use them as examples for a lot of things. Um, AKA Swator. Uh, that has the biggest budget of any game ever, from what I understand. It had it was a hundred. It was I don't think they released the exact numbers, but it was it was between 150 and 200 million dollars to make. Uh, it's the first fully voiced MMORPG, which is where the characters actually talk, because a common a common thing in MMORPGs is that the, uh, the characters don't talk. You it's uh, when you when you talk to an NPC non-player character, you uh, you read text. To read to to read what they say, Star Wars is different. You uh, there's actually cinematics, very, very minimalistic cinematics, but there's cinematics that show the characters talking to each other. I hope you can see the smile on my face, Apprentice. You are turning me into a true believer. Quit buttering me up. What now? I'm sure you're impatient to complete your time on that little rock. With the satellite tower computer destroyed and Commander Rylon's son neutralized, my spy's tracks are covered. Now the only threat to Rylon ever being exposed is the man himself. Um, Twitter is very story focused because it's made by Bioware and that's a very story focused company. Um, it's going free to play. It hasn't gone free to play just yet. As of the making of this video, they're working on it. And that's going to have a microtransaction based market as well. The uh, overall Swator is definitely a sign that MMOs are getting better with being fully voiced. Um, the graphics, the graphics are pretty good for an MMORPG these days, uh, and it's got a lot, of, it's got a lot of stuff that I think really do well in MMORPGs. That's that's my favorite MMORPG right now. I do, I think it's I think it's my favorite one because I I do really well in it. Most of the time, I'm the highest DPS in my guild. Most of the time, and that's pretty. I'm pretty proud of that. Um, and that's that's the, the that was uh, the the big games, the big MMORPGs. Not 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 all of them, but uh, you know, MMORPGs are really starting to take off, or, or I already have. I mean, but uh, they're they're. The MMO genre, not MMORPG, but MMO, Massively Multiplayer Online, has really made its way into the video game industry because there's, it's merging with other genres like Massively Multiplayer Online First Person Shooters, Battlefield, Modern Warfare, Tribes, Planetside, um, MMO RTS, Real Time Strategy, like Warcraft and Starcraft, both of, made, both of which are made by Blizzard, so they got lucky there. Uh, Starcraft 2 as well, I think. Um, Defense of the Ancients, one and two, um, and that is about all she wrote. She as in me, but I'm a guy. So uh, that's a general history of MMORPGs with a little bit of detail. Tell me what I missed, because I'm eager to know. I'm a big MMORPG fan, so yeah, tell me what I missed, and uh, if you got this far. Tell me what your favorite MMORPG is. Talk about it in the comments. Let me know what your favorite one is. My favorite, Star Wars The Old Republic. The only two, like I said, that I really got into were World of Warcraft and Star Wars, and I like, I mean, they both got advantages and disadvantages over the other, but I like Star Wars better, because I'm a big story buff. So, that's it. Look for my next video. I will uh, link it in the annotations when I make it. Um, I don't know which one it'll be just yet but I will get to it. So thank you for watching, and uh, don't forget to 
look at the last video I did on Monday, which was just a general intro introduction to MMORPGs. Um, my next video will probably be next Monday, either next Monday or next Wednesday, depending upon my schedule. Um, don't forget to subscribe and like my Facebook. Thanks for watching.